What is a contactor? So a contactor is essentially just a switch, but what makes it special is that it is a multi-pole switch. You can control multiple different things at the same time. So you can control several circuits with one switch. The other cool thing about a contactor is you don't have to walk up and push a button. With these, they're electromagnetic switches. So an electromagnetic switch, that just means that it is controlled by electromagnetism, by a signal, by current. Now, you can do that. You can have a switch be the thing that is sending current to the coil on here and that energizes that coil and changes the state of the contactor, which allows everything to turn on. Um, but you don't have to do that. You could have a time clock set up, you could have a photo cell, you could have some kind of remote monitoring. There's even crazy shit that they can do with ethernet where you could just have a signal sent through ethernet, sent to a relay, that relay controls the contactor, tr turns the, contr the contactor on, and then that turns all the parking lot lights around on, it turns the signage on and everything. So it's just like much more of a dynamic kind of a switch that doesn't necessarily need manual input. Relays are essentially the same thing. They're an electromagnetic switch, but relays are, t are typically designed for like low voltage applications or small current applications. But if you need something that's like 30 amp or 40 amp load, you need something heavier duty and that's where the contactors come in. Just remember that contactors are like events driven switches. So how do they work? First is the coil. The coil inside of here is just that. So from one terminal to the other terminal is a huge piece of wire that goes inside. And that coil is wrapped around two iron cores. There's one on the bottom, one on the top, but in the middle it meets up. And normally on a uh, contactor, there's going to be a little bit of space in there. And when you energize and send current through this coil, it, it acts like a magnet. That's what an electromagnet is. It sucks these two pieces of iron together. Well, the pieces of iron are attached, in this case, to a plate up here. So anytime you uh, energize that coil, it sucks this thing down. This is a normally closed contact, which means the terminals on this side are touching the terminals on this side. And when you energize that coil, it opens all of them up. That is a normally closed contactor. A normally open contactor is the exact opposite. This coil, when it's energized, that copper, it sucks these two iron uh, cores together. This actually closes the circuit. It takes the little pieces of metal inside of here and it makes this touch this, it makes this touch this, it makes this touch this. So that is a normally open contactor. The next part of a contactor that you need to know are the contacts themselves. So these are the contacts. This is where you would run a home run from a panel. You bring from a breaker, you bring power right here, and then you bring it out to the field somewhere. So one of these could be for parking lot pole lights. One of them could be for a sign. One of them could be for sconces somewhere, but it's three completely different circuits. So you'd have like a red, a blue, and a black coming in, a red, blue, black going out. Um, but you're basically just using this device to interrupt wires that are going right from a panel out to the field. So these are separate circuits. These are completely separate than the coil circuit. The coil circuit is called a control circuit because that's what you're using to control the device. But it's a, it's a way for you to have three circuits on the contacts and one circuit on the coil. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate your attention. I love you crazy people and I will see you in the next episode.